Thank y'all for joining us again. I'm so glad you're back with us. This is our fourth week of looking at Abraham's life. And today we're going to be reminded that God is faithful. We're going to look at Abraham and some circumstances in his life. And we're going to see his response. But all of those things are built upon this truth that God is faithful. That God is a God who is present with us. God is a God who meets with us. And God is a God who sees our needs. And so we're going to talk about what it means to place our faith. And what does this word faith actually mean? So I'll write it over here. Faith. Faith is the hope that we have in the things that we cannot see. Uh, it is the way that we work towards the things that we cannot see by placing faith in our effort and our abilities um, or in the fact that other people will see us and recognize us. For example, in schoolwork and sports and those things, you guys exercise faith all the time. But faith in God is the belief that God is doing things that are far beyond what you and I can see. And we're going to see how Abraham experiences this in his life today and how God reassures him that he is faithful. So let's remind ourselves of what has just happened in Abraham's life. Just the story prior in Genesis chapter 14, and today, if you want to, you can just go ahead and hit the pause button. Okay, you did. Now, you go find Genesis chapter 15 in your Bibles, all right? So hit the pause button, find Genesis chapter 15 in your Bibles. That's where we're at today. But in the last story, we had a story of a war between 12 kings. Now you say, wait a minute, 12? Yes, there were five on one side and four on the other, and they had a war. Actually, it was 13. And then those five won, and they ran off into the mountains with the people of Sodom, Lot and his family, and all their possessions and all their wealth. And they ran off into the mountains, headed back to where they had come from, Abraham goes and gets three other guys who are his allies, chieftains, who would have been considered like kings, but they were in the prairie, so they were considered chieftains. These guys had cities, they were considered kings. It's a long story, but they go get their four guys, they chase them down, meet them in the mountains, and destroy them, and bring back Lot and his family and the people of Sodom, and they reestablish them in their city. So Abraham's just won this great victory. He has his friends, his allies. He has the king of Sodom who now likes and appreciates him. We talked about how he met with the king of Salem, a man named Melchizedek. And so, but then Abraham has to do something. He has to go home. And Abraham's home is, if you remember, near the tree of Mamre. And what did Abraham live in? That's right, a tent. Now, I am sure this was a very big tent. I am sure that it was full of very nice things. Abraham was a very wealthy man. But if you were Abraham and you stood out here by the tree of Mamre and you looked across, you saw a great big city and you saw Lot living in the city. Now, I don't know exactly what Abraham was going through, but the Bible tells us that he was discouraged because it tells us that when God comes to him, Abraham responds in a certain way. And we're going to look at that today. So here's what happens. We're going to read Genesis chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6, all right? So if you got them open, look down at it. As I read, we might have a little bit of a different version, so some of the words might be a little different, but follow along as best you can. After these events, what events? Well, all those kings fighting, and Abraham delivering Lot and his family and the rest of the people of Sodom. After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you give me? Since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abram continued, look, you have given me no offspring, no children. So a slave born in my house will be my heir. And the word heir means the person who's going to get all of this wealth I had. And if you remember in Genesis 13 and 14, Abraham had a lot of wealth. He had a lot of possessions, a lot of cattle, and he had a lot of things that he had collected. He was a very wealthy man. And he had a dream to give that to his son. And that hadn't happened. So he says, God, what can you even give me? And the word of the Lord came to him. This one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body, a child, will be your heir. 
He took him outside and said, Look at the sky and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, Your offspring will be that numerous. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. So, there are a couple of things I want to remind us about today as we begin to look at this passage. And the first thing is this. God visits Abraham. God is not a distant God. God is not a God who says, well, Abram's not trying hard enough. He's not being good enough. But God is a, a God who visits his children. And the same thing is true for you and I today. He visits us as well. He visits us when we read scripture. He visits us when we hear our, we're encouraged by parents, adults, and teachers. He visits us when we're reminded and we step outside and look at the beauty of creation. God will visit with us. And he visits with Abram, and he meets him in his problems. But he visits with Abraham, and he makes him two promises. We're going to look at them. The first promise is he says, I am your shield. And a shield is something that you would carry in battle. Abraham has just come through a great battle. He's won this battle. And so the first thing God says to him is, I'm your shield, Abraham. I'm your protection. You guys went and you fought against those five kings and you brought back Lot and all of his family. I just want you to know that I am with you and I am your protection. And then he says something else. Abram, I am your reward. And I want you to think of like a treasure chest or maybe... Uh, a Christmas package, or something like that. He says, not only am I your, your protection, Abraham, I'll keep you safe, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you more than you can ever imagine. And it's pretty cool because Abraham has just got done giving the king of uh, Salem, a man named Melchizedek, we looked at that, 10% of everything he had just to bless this king. And so God says, Abraham, man, I am not only your protection, but I am your possibility anything good that can happen to you, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the one that brings it about. And so listen to what Abraham responds by. Abraham doesn't respond by saying, oh, okay. Abraham responds and he says to God, wait a minute. He says, you can't give me a reward. The only reward I want is to have a child. The only reward I want is to give all of my possessions, all my cattle and these great big tents I have and everything I have, I want to be able to give that to a child. I want to be able to pass that on. I want to be able to give them that. And he says this, I'm childless. I'm going to have to give everything that I own to a man named Eleazar. And he loves Eleazar. And Eleazar plays a prominent role in Abraham's life. But he's like, i got to give everything to him. I don't want to do that. And so God says, wait a minute, Abram. There's another possibility that you haven't imagined. So Abraham needs reassurance. Abraham had given up on his dream. His dream was to leave his inheritance to a child, and now he has to live at Eleazar. He had settled for good, but not a dream, and he had slowed down. So God is a God of possibility. First of all, God visits, and God is a God of possibilities. And so what he does to Abraham is very important for us to see. He takes Abraham outside, and he points to the sky, and he says, You see all these stars? He says, Count them. And then he says, If you can. And the implication there is you can't count the stars in the sky. Now, if you guys didn't hit pause right now, you couldn't count the number of dots that I left up there. I'll tell you in the end how many it is. But you couldn't do it unless you hit pause, more than likely. So Abram says to God, what do you mean? And so God says this. He pointed to what he could only imagine, the stars. And what he is saying to him is this, that more than you can ever believe, hope, or imagine, I can do. So I want to tell you something as we wrap this up today. This is the God that we honor and serve. The God who visits us when we're worried, when we're challenged, when we're concerned, and we're discouraged. This is the God who is working and doing things that we can never imagine or understand, like the stars in the sky, things that we can't even fully understand. He's working on our behalf. And this is a God who allows us to meet with him and our worship when we intentionally seek and honor him. Because guess what Abraham does when this is over with? He goes outside, he builds an altar, and he worships God. He takes his energy, his resources, his time, and he gives to God, and he honors God. And so on this stars over here, there's five there. I have a total of 49. If you come up with a different number, let me know. 
but that's what I have 49. So here's what the point is. I want you to see this. In your house, there are rules. There are rules for where you place things. You have right places to put your possessions. If I came over to your house today and you have a video game system or a video game controller, I wouldn't find that in the bathtub, right? It just wouldn't be there. You might have it on the counter because you carried it in there uh, when you were doing something in the bathroom, but it's not going to be in the bathtub. Uh, more than likely, I'm not going to find a full plate of food uh, on top of the garbage can, unless the garbage can's full and it's a paper plate. I get that. But you're not going to place your china on top of the garbage can. You're not going to place your ball in the sink. Why? Because we're taught the proper place to put things. Now, we have to be reminded of that all the time, but so too we need to be reminded that the proper place that we put our faith is in God not in our abilities, not in our efforts. And so God visits Abraham on this day and says to Abraham, I am who you need. And so too is God who we need as well. And we place our faith and trust in him. If you come this Sunday, you're able to join us. Then we are going to be in our second lesson. Now this is our theme verse here, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it talks about coming to Jesus and bringing our needs and concerns to him. And we'll find that he is faithful to us. All right, so here's our memory verse that we'll be going over for the next couple of weeks in Children's Church. I hope to see you, if I can, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock.